got scared you were going to trot out the whole thing. <laughs> um, well, since this is, I think this is the last award, um, I guess I'm supposed to say something nice about Susan Miles' talents. Her uh, ability to create a visual language with her costumes and how she interprets the characters and allows them to become in front of our very eyes. The details that she um, puts into her choices, details that really only an actor notices. Uh, I've made six movies with Susan, and I suppose that makes me the go-to girl for compliments. But um, there are a few things you might not know about Susan that make working with her, well, hell on earth. <laughs> and as long as I'm here, I might as well just air them. First of all, she wears all the clothes first. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and especially since we're the same size, you know, she, she sleeps in them. She stretches out my shoes with those big clod hoppers of hers. And then she dyes all the undergarments in the toilet of the costume truck and spits in there as well. <laughs> Plus, she's a bona fide sadist. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I saw the look on her face when she smothered my dresses on Nell and dust and dirt, or when she was ripping holes in my Jill Sander sweater on flight plan. That curl of a sadistic smile when, on Home for the Holidays, Cynthia Stevenson's silk dress look, took that disgusting flying turkey with the oily juices dripping on her face and her hair and her torso, and Susan was just sitting over there laughing and laughing and laughing. You should have seen that crazy smirk of pure evil when she showed me the designs for Russell Crowe's form-fitting skin-tight tights for Flora Plum. No wonder that movie never got made. <laughs> Susan Lyle is a sick, sick woman. But I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on the old peccadillas. I am going to let you in on her greatest merits that go way beyond the hum of the costume shop. Susan Lyle can dance. <laughs> now, if you've ever seen her whip that mane of hair, unwashed, crazy, uncombed hair, swishing around like a $2 whore on a Friday night. <laughs> she and I, yes, we are always the last ones left on the rap party dance floor and the only ones who truly know all the words to 50 cents. Hey, shorty, it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. Um, and maybe she gets her get down, you know, from her brief stint in a new wave band, the band of Susans, or perhaps she is just inhabited by the many characters she brings to life. My favorite, of course, the beaver played by Mel Gibson. Really, Susan? You're a beaver? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Truly well dressed. That we can see from the clips. One of my earliest inspirations to be a costume designer, and I only think about this now, was when Cinderella, when she had to have that dress made with the help of the mice and the birds. I remember just being fascinated by it, but after studying fashion design, not quite loving the fashion industry, and meeting, coincidentally, a casting director for a theater company, Circle Rep, and in the course of conversation, she said, well, you should do costumes. And I thought, oh, costumes, oh. The uh, collaboration starts with the script, the director, and then the actor. And then it moves into consideration of the action of the scene, the character, the actor's physical attributes, the color of their hair, their skin, their weight. All of these things help you arrive at the ultimate choice for the costume. Care to cut a rug handsome? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Working with Jodie Foster was a turning point in my career. When she took me seriously, everything changed. On Little Man Tate, I just talked about the kid, basically, and how to make the boy in Little Man Tate be different from the other kids and what his concerns and obsessions would be and how it would be reflected in his costume. We don't really talk about clothes, you know. We, uh, we talk about who the people are and how they've lived their life and you know, where would they shop? Where would they have picked up these clothes? How well do they take care of them? And um, I'm not as inventive as she is uh, visually in terms of the clothing style of the movie, but I always choose right, she says, because I choose the one she wants. <laughs> 
swinging. On Home for the Holidays, a big concern was the green dress worn by Cynthia Stevenson because around the Thanksgiving dinner table, Robert Downey Jr. is cutting that turkey and it shoots off across the table, smacks her in the chest. And then everyone goes in to help her and they just, they make it worse and spill all the juice from inside all over her and she is upset. We had to test all the different fabrics to decide which one stained the best, which one the goop from the turkey cling to the best, and of course still looked like an appropriate fabric for this prim green dress that she was going to wear. I think directors, and young directors in particular, they think they need to be very specific. They think they need to say it should be a red Hawaiian shirt, but they don't have to say that. They need to say what they hope to achieve. And that is usually expressed in an emotion or they should look uncomfortable. They should, whatever it is, we can help. And that's what we're there for, we're to help push the story forward. When I costume a period film, the research is very interesting and satisfying. But honestly, working in contemporary movies is in many ways more challenging because everyone wears their clothes, everyone knows what it feels like, and everyone thinks that it's, you just go and buy something. And it's really so much more complicated than that. And I've always found it hard to convey that somehow. There's a tremendous amount of thought and effort behind everything that you see on that screen that they are wearing. Even though we improvise and even though we're on the fly all the time, there is always a background to it. Susan always made me feel like a princess and so I thought I'd be one today so that I could hand it off to her. I said I wasn't gonna lose my for you. Susan Lyle, I love you. You're so great. Come on up. I have no idea who she is. <laughs> I really don't. Thank you. Oh, she's tech. I guess. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> In the film Rear Window, Jimmy Stewart suggests to Grace Kelly <clears throat> that she would have a hard time fitting into his world of photojournalism. Perfectly costumed, she turns to him and says, If there's one thing I know, it's how to wear the proper clothes. I think, <clears throat> I think this aptly describes what we costume designers do for each and every story we tell. We know how to find the proper costumes, and we have a lot of help doing it. Looking around tonight, I see the many incredible colleagues who have accompanied me in the process of this career. <clears throat> in this film family, there is the person who got me my first job on a film. There are assistants with whom I have spent hours and hours roaming the countryside, roaming Saxon Barneys, and roaming our own minds, searching for the perfect piece to perfect 
our character's costume puzzle. There are costume supervisors with whom I have spent hours inside wardrobe trailers contemplating the next day's travails. There are set costumers <clears throat> who have guarded the actors on the set with tremendous care and loyalty. There are PAs who have had to get all of our lunches and wait patiently in cars while I take care of one last thing. There are producers and production managers who have brought me in to meet directors and negotiated my deals. Yes, they're here. Uh, there is a director. There is a costume fabricator who can interpret a scrawl on a napkin and ask precisely the right question. There is a jewelry designer who can do the same. There is a tailor. It is the combination of all these skills that is the backbone of this profession. This amazing film family, <clears throat> which has embraced me for years, <clears throat> is only complemented by my own family. However, the film family is more obedient. <laughs> the bigger view would encompass New York women in film and television, which has so generously bestowed this honor. <clears throat> Terry Lawler appears to have endless energy, diplomacy, and grace. Plus, she gathers amazing interns. It feels amazing, so thank you.